Hello, everyone. Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It's time for tarot scopes. We're going to start with the tarot scope for the sign of Aries. That's Aries Sun, Aries Moon, or Aries Rising. And the Aries tarot scope is a good general tarot scope for, um, uh, for everyone because we're dealing with the natural order of the zodiac. Uh, before we get to the reading, let's take a look at a little astrology for Aries. And this, of course, would apply to all of us. As I said, Aries is a good one to look at for everybody. So uh, specifically for Aries, the ruler of your sign, Mars, is in the sign of Leo, self-expressive Leo, dramatic Leo. Um, and so it's sitting in your fifth uh, house of the of your natural zodiac. And the fifth house is the house of creative self-expression. It is the Leo house. And um, Mars likes being in Leo. It's been uh, struggling through its retrograde period in, in Gemini, and then it moved into Cancer, which was a relief, but still not particularly happy once it moved into Leo. It really started getting its feet under it. So this is a highly creative time for you. Of course, Leo also rules uh, children. Um, <clears throat> And fun. So you have an opportunity to have some fun. Some of that fun could end up being children. Uh, so just be aware that this is a more fertile time for you, Aries. Uh, this month, we have a full moon in the sign of Sagittarius with the sun, of course, in Gemini. This activates your third and ninth house with the sun in the third house and the moon in the ninth house. This is the axis of the mind. This is the... Um, the logical mind, Gemini, and the intuitive mind, um, uh, Sag. And uh, so we have an, uh, an awareness around uh, those particular issues. Um, and, and Saturn is square this, uh, the, the axis of this full moon, Saturn in Pisces, which in fact will be going um, retrograde on the 11th. So it is uh, building power. Now, as we move into, into uh, June, and, uh, and so we need to show compassion for others and practice forgiveness. This is going to be important this month. Um, <clears throat> Mercury makes a conjunction to Uranus. Mercury and Uranus have a special relationship because Mercury is the lower mind. Uranus is the higher mind. Uranus is the higher octave of uh, Mercury and Uranus always brings in the unexpected. We can get flashes of intuition. This is happening in the sign of Taurus, of course, because that's where Uranus is. And so there can be sudden uh, illuminations around what's important to you, around your money, around your resources. Um, but something is definitely going to come to mind for you. And then later in the month, uh, Mercury moves into uh, to Gemini which for you is your third house. So your mind becomes very active. Mercury is moving very fast at this time. Uh, in June, it is, uh, it's in the sign of um, Gemini. It's in the sign of, um, it's, it's in the sign of uh, Taurus coming out of its retrograde shadow. Uh, June for the last month of May, um, the last month, the last day of May, the first day of June. Uh, it's out of its shadow. And so that retrograde period of Mercury in Taurus is uh, whatever was brought up or whatever came up at that time is now being expressed fully and moving forward. But then it moves into uh, Gemini and it, it moves into Cancer. So it's moving very quickly. So we have three signs this month that Mercury is in. Um, we do have a new moon in the sign of Gemini as well. Uh, and it's at the latter degrees of Gemini. Um, and so it's about new ideas for you, new communications, um, maybe something new coming up uh, in your immediate environment, in your neighborhood and the like. Then Mercury moves into Cancer, as I said, and then the sun moves into Cancer, of course, as it does every time uh, we have the summer solstice. Um, Neptune is stationing retrograde uh, along with uh, Saturn. Both of those are in uh, Pisces. So it is in your uh, 12th uh, house, but um, 12th house, when things move around in the 12th house, 
some is very subtle. So the energy is very subtle and 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 shifting. But a generally a creative opportunity. We uh, a creative month. We do have that uh, grand square still in the sky. So there is a lot of stress. And for you, Aries, it's going to be in your fixed houses, your second, your um, your second, your fifth, your eighth, and your eleventh, which is um, your house of your values and your house of stability and your house of uh, emotion. So we're all going through this um, this as a, as a collective, no matter what sign you're in. Um, but uh, there is a lot of stress in those areas, and so you may need to break free from something in order to free your, your emotions. So that's what's going on for Aries in June. Uh, all right, let's get started with the tarot. I'm going to be using the crow tarot uh, to do Aries here. And um, we'll see what is coming up for Aries. Whoops, excuse me. Um, and I may do a oracle card, but I'll have to see what kind of time. There's a lot of things happening, so... All right, Aries, Aries, what does Aries need to be aware of for the month of June? What does Aries need to be aware of for the month of June? Well, Aries is a very um, brave sign, especially with the with Mars being in, in Leo. And so this is a time for you to take the lead on things. Uh, take the lead, of course, in your own life, you're used to taking the lead. Um, you're less likely to want to take the lead um, with and, and take on the responsibility of other people. Um, but uh, that is an important thing for you as well. Uh, Mars is pretty power packed. Mars is still in, as we begin the month, in orb of that opposition to Pluto. Um, Mars is still squaring Jupiter and Taurus. So we're still uh, pretty active with that. All right, let's see. We start with, ooh, choices, the lover's card. So this month for you is a choice month. You're going to need to decide um, on what direction perhaps you want to take. Uh, it can be a, a it can be around relationships, but the lover's card isn't always relationships, which kind of sounds weird, but it's true. I can just be choices. So you're being given a choice. You're being given a choice this this month. What is what is challenging that? We have the five of swords here. There are some um, abuse of power issues. Um, this can be just unfair tactics. Um, so you need to be aware as you're making the choice that there are. Um, people around you that are not so well intended. And that can be a challenge for you. Aries is generally, uh, while it is a fire sign and it can be rambunctious and it can be pugilistic, it's also an innocent sign. So it doesn't, it, as the first sign of the zodiac, it's not always quite uh, understanding of the nuances of the cruelty that can be around it. So, um, just just as you move through the month, be be gentle with yourself and your and we can see here the two crows uh, with the heart there. So it it's this is a warning to protect your heart. Uh, keep your innocence, but protect your heart. Okay, let's see what's underneath it all. The Knight of Swords. The, the Knight of Swords is an interesting card because sometimes uh, it is it's a it's a card that can keep um, that can get into things that they don't really understand what they're getting into as they rush forward. Uh, but it is generally, uh, well, it can go one of two ways. It can be not well-intended or it can be very well-intended, but either way, it tends to jump into things. And so it's important that if you're going to jump into something, you know what you're getting yourself into. You know what you're getting yourself into. Let's see what's in the past. We have the Knight of Cups. This is the this is a very different kind of knight than the Knight of Swords. The Knight of Cups is very romantic, but not always realistic. And so, in the past, maybe you have been, you've gotten into things uh, through your own sense of, uh, you know, of purity of heart. Uh, but you, but you wanted to do it, but you didn't quite have the 
tools to complete the task as it were. Um, knights are the action of the element. And so the Knight of Swords is the action, which is the root here, is the action of your mind. What your mind is telling you, the Knight of Cups is what your heart is telling you. Let's see what's in the sky for you. Okay, new opportunities. This is a Leo card, the Ace of Wands. This is that Mars and Leo, right? This So there's great uh, opportunities for creativity. Um, and there's, there's uh, new beginnings here, endings. This is an ending card and a new beginning card. It is in the numerology that I use a nine vibration. So there's always a, a wrapping up energy, but it's also about um, oh, uh, reaping the wisdom that you've accrued. So, so it's uh, utilizing that wisdom, utilizing your experiences to move forward, perhaps in a new and different way around the choices. This is again around the choices. Hold on one second. I think this is, yeah, that's better. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. So we have the sun coming up in the immediate future. This is really the card for, um, for the month for you. This is illumination. The sun incidentally is exalted in Aries. And so there's full illumination. So things are fully illuminated. This is very, very very, very nice, um, very nice. So as you move forward, you're gonna see what's coming. So, so pay attention, pay attention to what you're seeing, pay attention to what you're experiencing. Don't jump to the next thing because that can happen as well. They can be a little ADD, um, Aries, if you don't mind me saying. Um, how it's seen from the outside, you're seen as somebody who has wisdom and who's a good judge of character, a good judge of character. Um, yeah. So people do trust your judgment. All right. Your domestic situation. Oh, something is going to be revealed, the high priestess. In your domestic situation, there is uh, perhaps a secret revealed, or you find out a secret, but you keep it to yourself. Sometimes this is about knowing, but staying silent. But it is an opportunity to connect uh, uh, the, the the mind of God, my, minds of God, with the heart, or the heart of God with your own heart. It's it's a direct connection to spirit. This card, and so pay attention to messages coming through uh, as you go about your daily life. Um, you know, chop water before enlightenment chop water, carry carry water, chop wood after enlightenment, you know, but there's enlightenment in all the processes of carrying water and chopping wood. Um, hopes and fears, the aid of swords. This is a clean uh, break, so to speak. Uh, 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 a, a decision has been made, a direction has been taken. Uh, you will know what direction to go because the sun is here and it will show you the way to go. It will show you the way to go. And the outcome here is justice. We are going to see justice. Remember this Aries reading is for everybody. Uh, so justice is coming. The, the scales are being balanced. If you wish for justice, wish justice is here. Let's look underneath it. Oh, what do we have? We have the seven of swords. This is a uh, knowing, um, knowing who's the bad guy in this situation, seeing um seeing people and their actions for who they really are we have the magician this is about um creating your own reality as above so below this is a power that you have aries the magician is the one card the one is the number of aries and so this is a very powerful time and you have the perspective and the courage necessary so this is really quite uh, a, a quite a beautiful reading for you, Aries. I really feel as though uh, the decision is at hand and you're going to make the right one as long as you pay attention to the signs that you're seeing and be willing to look at things in full illumination. Um, this is all about a whole new, a whole new path for you, a whole new level um, and if there have been, you know, in we have a lot of the past here with maybe some regrets and and some real challenges. But 
but the future looks very, very bright for you, Aries, and hopefully for all of us as well. All right, let's see now. Um, all right, I think I would like to stop there. I stopped them on the head, so to speak. Um, all right, guys, have yourself a wonderful month. Like and subscribe if you would. For those of you who are new to my channel, I do astrology readings uh, with a combination of Kabbalah uh, and numerology. If you would like that, you can contact me at my website, thesiegeoftransformation.com. There is a link below. I also have a Patreon page if you want to help support my work. Uh, I could use the help. <laughs> I love the work. And um, what was the other thing I wanted to say? Um, I'm looking to reach 10,000 subscribers. So if you can share my work and and like and all that, get me out there. I'd, it'd be greatly appreciated. Until next time, have a wonderful month and uh, namaste.